My name is Emmanuel Fernhardt. I'm the Chief Digital Officer for a biopharmaceutical company called Sanofi. As a company, we set ourselves a pretty incredible purpose, which is to chase the miracles of science to improve people's lives. Saving time is the one thing that we can do because time is a currency that most patients don't have. So we thought, how can we improve the lives of millions of people around the world? And what could we do? And technology and AI just came at the perfect meeting point. If you look at our cycles, cycle of developing a drug in our industry is very long. It can take 12 years or more to get from an idea, a hypothesis, to a treatment. 90% of drugs unfortunately fail. So 12 years with a 90% chance of failure. Those are, are really tough numbers. And so if we can use technology and we can use artificial intelligence to change that and shave time in those 12 years and increase the probability of success, then we all benefit from it. Four years ago, when I joined Sanofi, it was quite a different company. The company had uses of artificial intelligence, but they were sporadic and they were not coordinated as such. You could see it in our factories, you could see it in our labs, you could see it in parts of the company. But we decided that we wanted to bring everything together and create a company-wide strategy, truly an enterprise vision behind artificial intelligence. And with that vision, we really came up with three categories of artificial intelligence that we want to differentiate ourselves. The first one is expert AI. The AI that you find in our labs in our factories, the AI that is truly designed for the expert, those that will use it. If you're looking for a cell, for example, we have an AI for it. If you're looking for a deviation, we have an AI for it. The second category, and the term was coined by our CEO, is snackable AI. Kind of like your Instagram of AI, if you want, where you have at your fingertips recommendations that are available to you in an app that we co-created with a company um, called Ailey Labs. That kind of technology is now available to thousands of employees. Over 22,000 people inside Sanofi have access to it, and they can make decisions at their fingertips. And the third category, and I think most of us have been exploring that category these days, is generative AI. There's a certain creative ability to generative AI, so we're able to create new content, localize it at speed, and reach patients and healthcare professionals faster than ever before. For our employees, we've launched something that we call concierge at this point in time, which is kind of this idea that there is an element of help, digital help that you can get to do activities that you really don't have to do on a daily basis. So we want to be able to book your holiday, inform your team when you're out, book sick days, do, do activities like that through a concierge and a, really a digital concierge, which is full of generative AI. That's been our approach. I think that approach will happen in all our lives and we'll all have some sort of a concierge or multiple concierges that will help us for our day to day. Every time you launch something new and you bring a lot of innovation, of course, you're gonna have some setbacks. There's moments of failures and those failures are the moments of corrections. What we've learned is first of all, the technology wasn't quite as ready as we had anticipated it. And so that was a, that was a humbling lesson. The technology also evolved much faster than we anticipated. When we had something fairly stable that we thought that was going to deliver value, quickly a new technology was available that superseded it. So you've got to be wise about innovating at speed, but also be willing to sacrifice what you just developed because something better comes just after. When you're looking at implementing AI, there's a risk of doing a little bit of too much and really not going deep. So we thought that we wanted a strong governance. We created a Gen AI board. And in that governance, we select use cases or value theories, as some call them, that have a tremendous amount of potential impact for the company, whether it be creating top line, shaving time, just the impact is, is an element of, of, uh, of selection. And then we agree that we're going to go deep. We don't want to sprinkle dust. We just want to go deep and solve a problem from the ground up and, and truly deliver on the value that it can, it can generate. That's been, I think, one of our recipes of success. And that, I think, has been our, our biggest lessons learned in, in generative AI. Just focus on what value you're trying to generate. Ensure that you have the right level of technology test, test benches. Um, and then 
deploy it as fast as possible in your production environment so you can learn from it. I think too many people shy away from putting things into the real world. POCs, proof of concepts, prototypes are shallow. They don't deliver value. They deliver a hypothesis. Testing the hypothesis in the real world with minimum viable products that you put in the hands of your users, your clients, your patients is far more powerful.